another rescue mission. This is a table that Shay and I made, well, I made, uh, 2013. Now, it was in a consignment house, but it had cracked a leg. And rather than telling me because they thought it'd make me sad, they went ahead and stuffed it in the back. And I only found out about it last year. So I pulled it back. We're going to fix it, which is what should have been done quite some time ago. And then there is a charity raffle silent auction coming up. So we're going to throw it in there. And it was just an incredibly poor design choice on my part. I wanted these really thin legs, which I no longer actually find super attractive. But I made one attempt to knock them loose. And uh, they're really glued in there. So we're going to leave them. In addition to it being quite thin, it's also got grain running the wrong direction. So on that spalted leg back there, <laughs> there there's screw up number three, um, it's popped. The same problem that the last table I had built the same vintage. Should be no problem to reinforce it and get it in that auction, even though that auction is uh, next week. It should be easy he says. So along the lines of repair, I've made up two panels of wood. And the idea, as I envision it, is to uh, basically double up the legs, sort of plywood style. So we'll have stuff going vertically and stuff going horizontally. Should be fairly easy. We got a spalted birch, a white birch, and I think this might be apple. It should flatten back out and not be particularly noticeable. It'll just look like that's how I built it in the beginning. The top of this is one of those big mulberry slabs. Beautiful wood. Very, very hard. It's not super elegant, but the idea now is that I will trace around the outside edge and very carefully cut it. A little nervous about my ability to get that good a cut and in fact I'm positive I won't be able to get that accurate a cut so I might actually put it in a little you know if it was inset an eighth or a quarter it would give it a nice decorative look and I wouldn't have to worry about threading the needle quite so much it's basically a cast she's never gonna gallop again but it might not fall down now basic structure so this outer line is the actual trace template of the leg. The inner lines, those are the lines that I created as a cut pattern. That way, it'll be a stepped in about a quarter of an inch. I'm still going to reinforce everything, especially with some glue. I think, I think that'll work just fine. And I basically, I mean, I used a straight edge for these and the V but I essentially freehanded the rest of it. There is the crutch in place. Once it's glued and screwed and clamped and tamped and sanded, there's where it broke. This was supposed to look like hips. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing either. A little chilly up here. Probably too chilly to glue. We're gonna try it anyways. So there are my pieces, not super fancy. You can see that I did cut them back. So for the most part, they'll just remain unobtrusively in the background. From the sides, you probably won't even, I guess it's in the sides, the ends. You won't even see them. If you do see them, it'll just look like a detail. I did my best to sand back the finish, and I believe it was a spray lacquer on this. But I don't believe for a moment that I got an all, and I don't think that a white or yellow glue, glue is going to be appropriate there. So I'm going to use the, the Gorilla Glue, the polyurethane glue. Because it's the Gorilla Glue, and it needs some moisture, I brought a wet rag to wipe down one side of my glue surfaces like so then I'll get the smears 
put it together and clamp the gajesus out of it. One. I'm just going to set up, glue this, and go back inside. Winter has returned to Montana again and I've got at least two inches of fresh snow with another four on the way. It's been quite the year. And there we have this monstrosity proving once again that uh, when it comes time to getting a gift for your woodworking significant other, don't peruse the catalogs of Garrett Wade for some quirky tool. Clamps. It is simply not possible to have enough clamps. Big clamps, little clamps, spring clamps, ratchet clamps, string clamps, band clamps, C clamps. I'm kind of running out of clamps. But it doesn't matter. They ain't enough. This is all but one that I could find right now. And I wish I had more. Other news, I went ahead and lit the fire because I was really afraid this uh, polyurethane Gorilla Glue wouldn't, wouldn't expand and harden properly. Though, ever since Floppy Hat Photos incident, I've been super nervous about walking away and leaving the fire going downstairs. So I'll have to come out and check on it you know, in an hour or so and then before I go to bed. But, unfed with a load of hardwood, it should bring the temperature up here, 60s maybe. It'll be fine, and that glue will harden okay. They're all done. I just used a clear spray finish out of a can, right? Just doing a sort of a touch-up. Yep, now I'm gonna flip it over and Massage the feet tips a little bit so that it sits flat. I mean, it's a slab table, so it's always going to twist. Best you can do is adjust it so that it sits flat at any one time. Either with little feet or taking a little off the feet. Here it is all done. It's going to go and be auctioned off at a school function. So I brought it to school so they can pick it up tomorrow. It still is a beautiful slab of wood on top. It comes from a time when I didn't know nearly as much as I do now. Not that I'm even remotely competent. Birch, we cut. These are birch from our own property in the Flathead Valley. And then uh, mulberry. Before it sat out, it, it was a much more gold green color. And it's toned down to a, a caramel chocolate. Still beautiful slabs of wood. But it's a fruit wood, and you can see just the shattered nature of these big, wide, flat bores. That's the beast. That's the beast. Far from perfect. It should bring in some money at the auction. And not everything has to be perfect, right? <laughs>